Well, hey there, I am Arthur Morris. This coming August 8th will mark 40 years of photographing birds. Something I love to do and just as much I love teaching other folks to make great images. I visit San Diego every year. Consider joining me in December or January coming up. And I'll be doing two tours in Homer, Alaska for the bald eagles. If you come on an IPT, you will go home a far, far better photographer. Afternoons at the Soto are usually not as good as mornings. I have a favorite afternoon spot that I'd visited on the last IPT. We had been there twice. I decided to take the boys and girls to North Beach. So you can see here hitting F to see the uh, EXIF data in Photo Mechanic that I was using the Sony 200 to 600. The f6.3 aperture is somewhat limiting, but on a sunny day, no big deal. So I wasn't quite ready when this willet flew at us and landed, so I was late getting on the bird. Didn't get him in the middle of the frame, didn't get on him early enough. So, beautiful bird, but I'm not thrilled with that area just below the bird. A few minutes later, we had a wimbrel. Again, I didn't get him in the center of the frame. I wasn't really being serious. I said, well, we'll go and take some pictures and see what happens. Too much motion blur. I'll hit, put the cursor on the face, Command Z, and a lot of motion blur as he's blasting off. Then I'm still standing with the 200 to 600, zooming out a little, have a bathing laughing gull, make a few frames, and still not real serious. And then there was a group of sleeping shorebirds with a few bathing birds off to their right. So I got on the ground and just sitting, shooting off my knee, had a Dunlin bathing, one jumping after the bath, and a very worn sanderling. I love the soft background. Here I put the lens between my heels to get low. And of course this needs to be straightened easy enough in Photoshop. Still working with just the lens alone, f6.3, get a yawning Dunlin, and here he's preening. And then I got the idea, well, let's put the teleconverter on, stop down a third of a stop, and get really close to these guys. So this is a Dunlin resting, and I'm going to get out of here. We're going to be with the 200 to 600 and the teleconverter for most of the program. So a sleeping Dunlin, losing this bird will be easy in Photoshop. And then a nice sanderling molting into breeding plumage. And my advice when the birds ruffle is blast away. And the unusual thing here is that here he's on one leg. Here he's on no feet. He's up in the air with one leg tucked in. Lots of folks see a shorebird like this and they go, oh, he only has one leg or one foot. Not the case. They'll almost always have that other leg and foot tucked up into their belly feathers. This guy killed me. I was nice and close. Again, working with the heel pod, the foot pod. Never got a good look at his face. Spectacularly beautiful Dunlin. Pretty much breeding plumage with another sleeping bird to his left. Back to the sanderling, still sleeping. Stopping down a little bit. And then a Dunlin ruffle. So when the birds start to ruffle... Get focus on the eye and just hold the shutter button down. One of my favorites from the afternoon, a ruffling sanderling, still mostly in winter plumage, just starting to molt. You see some of the orange feathers here with the beautiful Dunlin in the background. Then I got on another Dunlin, preening, scratching, and just a perfect pose and when the birds are still, it's easy to make them super sharp. Notice the crisp, crisp, crisp eye skin. So we see here that I'm wide open at F9, 1250th of a second, ISO 1600, zoomed out fully to 840 millimeters. And that's a great tip I learned recently. Once you've pulled out this pane with the information, in Photo Mechanic, you can hit the F key to toggle back and forth. 
Same bird scratching. Another bathing dunlin. This one at 840. You can see, well, 734. I zoomed out a bit, but still with the teleconverter at F9. And then closer to the parking lot, I saw Royal Turn Lane land. So I went over and took a snap of him. And then there was a laughing gull bathing. So I got on him. Again, you'll see zooming out from 840 to 606 millimeters. So I don't clip the wings or try not to. And then I got a big surprise. A double amputee. This laughing gull had no foot on either leg. Most likely from getting his feet caught in a mussel or clamshell. And then, I don't know, we see lots of shorebirds like this, but I've never seen a gull with both feet gone. And here you go for the splashing shot. Some really cool stuff. And another one. Both of those I'd probably do some eye doctor work to get the splashes out of the eye a bit. And just the regular splash without his head underwater. And then the turns started to bathe, so I switched track. I moved over. I reduced the exposure a little. White birds need less light. And the whites on royal turns are much whiter than the whites on laughing gulls. The pictures you're seeing here today are from 341 keepers. I thought it was going to be a crummy afternoon, and it turned out to be fabulous, even epic. So again, let's see, zooming out to 606 millimeters and blasting away. All nice images. And then the takeoff. And of course, two beautiful wine red feet. Then back to the royal turn, just blasting away. Love all these poses. Here I love that the bill is set nicely against the far wing. And of course all the splashes are pretty wicked. Then I decided to go from my knee, working on the knee pod for support, to putting the lens between my heels, the foot pod. A totally different perspective. I wish I had done it sooner. Nice splash shot here. A zillion splashes. And just keep blasting. You're seeing three or four from each sequence. That was probably 50 or 60. Again, the bill set against the far wing. And the cool underwater headshot. And then zooming out to 766. And getting lucky and getting the bird, the whole bird in the frame. Love the water coming off the tail. And here he's jumping up. So then I said to Stu Goes, let's head over to Hidden Lagoon and see if there's anything in there. So we were walking up and I was paying attention to not smack my feet on the little uh, tree stumps. It can kill your toes if you're not paying attention. And Stu looks up and says, hey, there's a spoonbill there. So we hustled over and got in position. And we saw not only a spoonbill, and then a second bird flew in, but a beautiful white morph reddish egret. So here I immediately took off my teleconverter, you see the 6.3, because it was already late on the light and ISO 2500, and I knew we'd be going to higher ISOs. F to go back to the full frame. So I concentrated on the spoonbills first, the... Uh, the reddish egret was well off to my left. And for this little series, I was wishing the birds were separated a bit more. And they're both preening in here. The one on the right is swishing his bill through the water. And then a nice little pose. And then same that same motion of putting their bill in the water to get water to preen their feathers. Then they separated and made a shot of one. And this will give you an idea why for all of these images I'm standing. Had I gotten down on the ground, it could have, could have done it easily. I would have brought in all of this crud in the background, the mangroves and dead bushes and stuff. So I opted to stay standing. And again, you'll see we're already up to ISO 3200 at 5.6 because I zoomed out. So this is a good exposure. And the next one's not bad either. Stu had asked me if the white morphs have the beautiful ruffs. 
And the answer obviously is yes. And here I'll tighten this up with the crop from the top left. Another single spoonbill. And then the reddish egret came from well to my left in this little puddle out into the main lagoon and started dancing. I made sure I was in zone IPT. Zone IPT. I got instructional photo tours on the brain. Tracking zone autofocus. Beautiful stuff. I'll blur the mangroves when there's some separation there. Another beauty, and again, this is probably a hundred frame sequence of which you're seeing four or five. Then another jumping spree. Yeah, I wish that he weren't so high in the air to get the mangroves. Double for this one. Pretty cool. I may be able to blur some of the mangroves here. And now he's on the hunt, he or she, the white morph reddish egret. Steaming up when he sees a fish. Then he strikes and gets a fish and then back to hunting. And then the spoonbill, I'm going to actually do a blog post on this one explaining the situation. But I got very, very lucky. And then the next thing I know, we have three beautiful birds in front of us. High ISO, but lots of great opportunities. And I fill a card. And I remember taking my Delkin uh, card protector, the blue thing, intentionally taking it out of my fanny pack saying, there's no way we're going to kill this afternoon. But we did to the tune of 341 keepers for me. So at the very end, we had a nice sunset. I wanted to teach him some Japanese painting stuff. And alas, I had to delete some images off the card. Don't fall for the mindset. It's going to be lousy and fail to take extra cards or batteries. Anyway, I hope to see you on an IPT, San Diego, next December or January, or Homer, next February and March would be great, and get out and make some great pictures. Love you much. Artie.